This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Lenovo Yoga 920. It's the most improved Ultrabook ever compared to the Yoga 910, which says a lot because the Yoga 910 wasn't a bad device. It just fell a little short of the competition, which last year was the HP Spectre X360 13-inch. The Yoga still has that really attractive watch band hinge. It's very thin. It's got a 14-inch display, so a slightly larger footprint than the average 13-inch, but not a lot, and that does get you more screen real estate. So what's so much better? No more chin cam focusing on the nose hairs and all that. The camera, the webcam is up top right now. There are Thunderbolt 3 ports, something that was missing last year. Also active pen support, Wacom AES digitizer built in. And of course the latest Intel 8th generation CPUs. Starts around $1,200. We're going to look at it now. So first off, for those of you who saw my Lenovo Yoga 910 review last year or read discussions and forums and stuff like that, the 910 can be a toasty and a noisy little beast. The good news is that this one doesn't have that problem. It's significantly cooler and quieter. Uh, really, there's nothing to see even with thermal photographs here because it just doesn't, generally speaking, get that hot. Even with moderate to heavy use, like editing and exporting video, that sort of thing, compiling some software programs, you get the idea for heavy use there. And the noise, you usually won't hear the fans at all. And when they do come on, they are not desperately screaming loud. And they don't come on that often, even if you're working it, you know, moderately hard. If you're working it really hard, if you're playing games with it or something like that, yeah, well, you will hear the fans then. But this is true of any Ultrabook. So they've gotten it down to normal conditions. The other important thing here is Intel 8th generation, 15 watt quad-core Ultrabook CPUs. It used to be those were dual cores, but Intel doubled the number of cores, upping performance by up to 40%. Now, it starts with a low base clock speed, these Intel 8th gen quad-core CPUs for Ultrabooks, but it can turbo boost quite a bit. And you can see the performance on the graphs there. It manages to turbo boost enough to really give you some significantly good performance. Even real world tests, like I do handbrake exports of video just to test the CPU and integrated GPU. And yeah, it's almost twice as fast for doing those sorts of things compared to an Intel 7th generation. Considering the fact that it's a 14 inch rather than the usual 13.3 inch Ultrabook, it's pretty light, 3.02 pounds, which is 1.37 kilograms. Price starts at $11.99 right now. Again, prices probably will come down because this is holiday shopping season starting and typically Lenovo has a lot of deals and discounts going, as do some of their retailers like Best Buy. For that price, you get a Core i5, eight gigs of RAM, a 256 gig, SSD, and that's a PCIe NVMe SSD, the fast kind, as it should be in this price range. That's a 1080p display. You can go and max that out if you want with the 4K display, a Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 1 terabyte SSD, and then you can hit $2,000. Speaking of $2,000, there's going to be a glass lid edition. Now, last year with the 910, Lenovo did a lot of cool things, like Star Wars lids, and there was a glass lid model, although the glass lid model is actually a pretty good buy. This time around, it has a Vibes pattern top on it, and it's $2,000, which I think is an awful lot to pay for a little cosmetic touch. It is a pretty high-end configuration, though, to be fair. It sure looks sophisticated and understated, except for that watch band hinge, which adds just a bit of bling. It's available in our color, which is called bronze. It's a nice color. It's interesting. Or a silver, which I think is called platinum. So you've got two color options there. The power button is a little easy to accidentally press. It's located on the side. It's not the only convertible that's guilty of that, I have to say. Another great improvement here, by the way, is the keyboard. One thing that drove people crazy, the right shift key was undersized in the 910. Well, guess what? It's a normal size now. It's been enlarged. And you have an arrow key cluster, so the arrow up and down have gotten a little bit smaller, but I won't complain. I'm still not in love with the keyboard. It's low travel, about 1.3 millimeters, which isn't unusual these days for a old, skinny Ultrabook, but it feels a little mushy and indistinct. It's not terrible, but it's certainly you'll never confuse it with a ThinkPad keyboard. The trackpad on this is to die for. It is really excellent and Mac-like. Two finger gestures, scrolling, good behavior all around. I just like it. It's like it's reading what I'm thinking. There's no Windows Hello camera, but there is a fingerprint scanner on the keyboard deck, which as, mm, as the case for most of these works just fine. 
Ports are a little stingy. And again, we keep seeing this as these ultra big books get thinner and lighter and smaller. Good news is two Thunderbolt 3 ports, two of them. Now, they also support USB-C Gen 2. Uh, one of them will be used for charging, and you get a USB-C 65-watt charger in the box. Only well, needs 45 watt, they go up to 65, so it'll charge more quickly. Beyond that, you have one USB-A port and a headphone jack. That's it. Granted, you can use USB-C hubs and expand all that out, so it's not the end of the world, but this is not one of those jack-of-all-trades that has a whole lot of ports on it, kind of laptops. Lenovo's proud of the fact that it has long-range microphones, so I guess Cortana can hear you from across the room. I don't know how useful that is. And if you're paranoid and you're afraid that Cortana is listening to you, you might not be thrilled. To remove the bottom cover, you remove the Torx T5 screws. They're all visible, nothing hidden under rubber bumpers like HP does. Thank you, Lenovo, for making life a little less difficult. Pops right off. You don't have to pry it or use suction cups. It's pretty easy. And here's what you see inside, which is a whole lot of not very serviceable stuff for the most part. We have the unusual two fan design. Usually, unless there are dedicated graphics, you're not going to see two fans. But, well, Lenovo does it. And it does run cool, like I said, and fairly quiet. So that's useful. Here's our socketed Wi Fi card, in, and it's a Qualcomm Atheros card. This is our 70 watt hour battery and speakers. And RAM is solder on board, you can't upgrade it. It does have a socketed SSD, but the bad news is you have to take out this motherboard, flip it over to get to the SSD, which is just no fun, especially because there's a lot of very tiny, delicate ribbon cables involved here that you'd have to detach first. So we ding that. If it's that hard to upgrade the storage on Ultrabooks, some people really care about that. Yeah, oh well. Now for the display, there's full HD and 4K options. We have the full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. And same as last year, 4K might be overkill in terms of resolution. Maybe if you're doing, you know, serious photo editing, that sort of thing, it's nice, or 4K video editing. But the difference really is in how colorful it is and how contrasty it is. And the 4K model is more colorful and has higher contrast. It looks nicer to the eyes. It really doesn't have as much to do with the resolution as to that. And you know what? The HP Spectre X360 13 inch is the same way. The, the, the 1080p looks not bad. It's competent, but the 4K just goes, woohoo, yeah, nice colors. My only complaint with this display is it's not really very bright. It only measured 248 nits. That's a little bit below what's average these days in the high-end laptop competition where we like to see getting it closer to 300 nits. And this has the worst factory calibration I have seen in a while. Look at that graph right there. Everything is just off the charts, not right. Happily, color calibration does fix it. And you can really tell if you look at it before it's been calibrated, because instead of humans looking nice and peachy pink, they look kind of lemony, yellowy, blue. Blech. Yeah, you can see the rest of the specs on screen there. They're all quite good and the contrast is good and all that sort of thing. Uh, it matches the competition there. The speakers are quite loud. The JBL down firing speakers are on the curve on the bottom. So yeah, you're going to actually be able to hear the audio even when it's on the desk. And it was pretty nice for watching movies. In the box, we got the Lenovo Active Pen 2. As I mentioned, I'm not sure if all configurations are going to include this. It might be the case that you have to buy it separately for around $40 or so. So this is the updated Wacom AES Pen that supports 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity like all active digitizers. It has palm rejection. I wear this art glove because when you're an artist, you just don't want to stress about it, just in case because palm rejection still isn't perfect. As it goes, though, it's pretty good on this. The Wacom control panel was not pre-installed, so I went and downloaded the Wacom Feel It driver. Just go to Wacom's website, and you want the Feel It driver. And then you can do some customizations. We can take a look at that right here. So you can assign what the buttons do over here. Again, we have Bluetooth. You can pair it by pressing over here after you put the two little teeny weeny batteries in. This uses a quadruple A battery just for the pen functionality. If you want the Bluetooth functionality, there are two coin cell batteries included. So you can pair it and you can launch your program of your choice, program it to do that. But anyway, the side buttons independent of that Bluetooth functionality can be programmed to do something. This is on a global level, not per application. This is not something fancy like a Wacom Intuos or a Cintiq Pro or something like that. And you can set the pen pressure. That's the thing that I particularly like. Back to Photoshop, 
This is a painting that I started actually on this. It's at the beginning stages, as you can tell. It works quite well, honestly. I like the pressure curves on this, the sensitivity. I'm just doing a light little bit right here to extend the orange of the clouds. You can see how that's just going really nice and smooth. And it's pretty precise. And of course, for note taking, just about anything is going to work just fine these days. Every laptop on the market that supports an active pen is quite good for note taking. Battery life is fantastic here. Now we do have the full HD model and 4K typically gets worse battery life. So we're talking about the full HD model, but given the fact that it has a 70 watt hour battery, which is just humongous for a Ultrabook in this size and class, it's got to last a long time. And in fact, it does. In terms of actual use time, I was managing to get eight and a half to 10 hours out of this thing, actual use time. That's what brightness set at 100 nits. The only complaint about the battery is I did notice that when it's in standby, that is you just close the lid without shutting it down and it goes to sleep, it lost more power than it should have overnight, say about 15% or so. And that's something Lenovo could fix with the software update and I hope that they do. So that's the Lenovo Yoga 910 Ultrabook with convertible design active pen available for an Intel 8th generation CPUs for 40% faster performance compared to last generation's model, which is a significant jump, first we've seen in years. Two display resolution options available, just like the competition from HP. I really think they're going after HP with this one. You have Thunderbolt 3 on board now. It's really a good piece of kit. Nice design. And it's not perfect. You could have more ports on this. Honestly, sure, you have the two Thunderbolt 3 ports slash USB-C. One that will be used for charging at times. Uh, there's no HDMI, for example, no SD card slot. The price is kind of high, but as with many Lenovo products, they often go on sale. They go on sale a lot, and especially with Black Friday and holiday shopping season coming. I expect much like the Yoga 910, it's be going to become more and more affordable. I'm not so sure about that glass topped model that's $2,000, that Vibes lid one, but other than that, I think the prices will even start coming down. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.